Guys, what's up? Today we're going to talk about the inkjet stencil system. And I just want to get into uh, how to make a stencil real easy with any image on either your iPad Pro or your iPhone. Unfortunately, on the iPad Pro right now, I am using iOS 14 beta, and we are in beta 7 right now. So every time I try to do this on the iPad, I'm going to show you guys what happened in case you guys are using beta. Let's say I want to select an image. Let's try this. It crashes. So I'm going to show you how to do the same exact thing on the iPhone. And this is the application that you will need. It is called Tattoo Stencil by Pony Lawson LLC. All right. So let's open this up. And we hit Browse okay go to photo library select your image so I want to do this Dr. Jekyll okay it's gonna show it to you at first okay and then once you crop the image if you feel that you need to crop it we continue we click done and you get a stencil and you could select the detail amount of the stencil that you want although this I feel like okay so see how it changes the image to uh, you know more linear structure and less linear structure a little bit of a pain in the butt to use this slider if it works half the time okay so I kind of prefer mine about eh, kind of like kind of like that yeah okay all right so once that's done you hit the top arrow there you save the image okay now we're gonna go into photos again before this image is printed on your Epson inkjet stencils printer doesn't matter which printer you're using I'm going to rotate the camera right now and set the printer up and talk to you guys about how I like doing that exactly. But first and foremost, what you want to do is hit edit and flip the image horizontally. Because within the Epson iPrint app, this is not possible. For some reason, I don't know why it doesn't allow it. So then we want to go into our Epson I print app, print photos, hit recents, and then we select the image, and now that image is ready for print. All right, so let's get into printing. Now. All right, guys, so we are going to get into printing this image with my Epson, and this is the ETM1170 monochrome model that I like to use. And I like to print from back here instead of using the direct um, the part that uh, that you can pull out here and uh, put uh, your paper into. I don't use this section because when I use this section, I f the paper crumples and it can kind of get annoying. So I always use one piece, which is very important. Don't stick every a bunch of pieces back there and expect it to print perfect you might get issues where the paper will crumble and every time before you print you want to run a head cleaning it's very very important all right so let's hit uh, the print and let's print this image all right and now this is printing This is the inkjet stencils paper that I use. This is from inkjet stencils. And I'll be applying that stencil to a piece of synthetic skin. Okay, this synthetic skin is from a guy by the name of Jess Cavazos. I have done a review on him already. And here we have our print from the inkjet stencils printer. 
Okay, and this is exactly how I like my stencils. All right, cool. Let's get into putting it on synthetic skin now. All right, guys, so here we have our printer, and this is how I like to keep my printer. I always have it covered if I'm not using it. I feel that keeping it covered kind of keeps the dryness of the air out of the printer itself so maybe the lines within it don't fully dry out and you don't get the situation where a lot of people have been saying within the inkjet stencils group that uh, their prints stop working I've been using this printer for months now and I have had no issues I did although into the tank put one cap of 70% isopropyl alcohol, just one cap like this. Before I even put any of the inkjet stencil solution in to the printer, I put alcohol into the printer. I have had no issues, although inkjet stencils does not necessarily recommend doing that. I did it anyway because there were a lot of people talking about how it benefits using a little bit of alcohol within the tank it doesn't let the lines dry out and I figured why not let's try it all right so another thing that's important with this system you want to use one piece of stencil paper at a time I like to use the bottom feed tray instead of using this tray back here I just feel that it works better for me that way when I'm using the bottom feed tray that's there I put my paper in I get my guide correct and then I will close it and also if I am not printing on the printer I always keep the printer shut off so if it's not busy in the shop and you're not tattooing keep the printer off do not leave it on now I will turn the printer on and literally, before I print, I will go into my Epson print app. And this is every time, every time before I make a stencil, I run head cleaning. Every time. So, I will do head cleaning. It will clean the heads. Every time before you print, you have to do this. This is very important. Okay? Well, you don't have to, but I very highly recommend doing it simply because it helps the printer maintain its health and longevity over time. So it's very important to do this. I very highly recommend doing this continuously before you make any prints at all. So once this finishes, all right, we'll actually get into printing this stencil. Now, of course, as you saw, I flipped the image horizontally within the Photos app itself. This will be the image that I'm going to be printing. And this image might look a little crazy to you guys with how it's set up, but I'm pretty used to using these type of images when I'm tattooing. And I'll be placing this image directly onto synthetic skin. I have a slab of synthetic skin here. This is from Jess Cavazos. He makes some of the best synthetic skin out there on the market. Definitely much better than uh, other companies I have tried. I'm not going to name any of those companies. But all right. So we're going to wait for this printer to finish, and then we'll get into actually printing the stencil. All right, so for this process, we are going to be using speed stick and a little bit of stencil prep. Okay, 
course, first thing you want to do is put some gloves on. and we will prep the synthetic skin you want to get the speed stick on to the synthetic skin really really good you also want to use the side of the synthetic skin that is not shiny the shiny side does not stick very well although you can use it but it doesn't work very well with the inkjet stencils paper inkjet stencil system you want to get a nice coat of speed stick onto your synthetic skin before you apply the stencil okay and then you want to do one two squirts of stencil prep and rub it in real good Now, I like my stencils on synthetic skin, not too dark, and that's the way I prefer it. So, you guys will see how I like it. And I'm going to apply. So, you want to really press down well. I saw a video on YouTube in the Inkjet Stencils group. The guy literally took the back of his deodorant stick and started doing this, which I guess works. It's fine. You can also just use your hands, checking, see how it transferred. And pretty much that's how I like it. Exactly like that. As you can see, this is how I like my transfer to be, and this is what works best for me. Okay, there you go. So, this system itself has saved me tons and tons of time. Now, when I am applying a stencil on regular skin, it is rather simple to do. I follow the same procedures, but you don't necessarily have to make your line, your stencil line work like this. I feel for synthetic skin, this works the best. Uh, when you try to apply more of a realistic image towards synthetic skin, it doesn't really transfer well because the skin just won't really pick up the gradation of tones. So it can be a problem. So now, let's get into how to make a stencil in Photoshop. Alright, for those of you guys that do not have an iPad Pro, but you have a computer, whether it's a MacBook or it's a PC, the same will apply. Okay. Let me adjust my camera here for you guys. Let me log into my computer. All right. Let's, uh, let's get rid of all of these notifications first. All right, so we'll go right into Photoshop, and uh, oh, that's my banner. All right, well, that's all good. Let's see if we could find an image here. Okay, for example, let's. Uh, we have, I have a bunch of Batman stuff that I'm going to be tattooing soon, and those are like all the villains. The guy wants his whole arm done. Uh, Let's find a better image here. Mm, I have a penguin here that I kind of like. Okay, here we go. We have the penguin. Let me zoom in 
a little bit. Okay, and we'll zoom in here. We'll make this larger. Okay, so this is a, this is a simple process to do this. You can print the image like this, and literally it will print exactly the way you see it. Now, what I like to do is I like to go to the dodge and burn tool and use my dodge tool, and I will lighten up areas of the actual image. And as you can see, using the dodge tool by tapping, it gets brighter. You can even brighten up that background around the face. Scale the image down a little bit. Brighten up that hat. And this will work a lot better for your print when you transfer over to skin. You can't have it extremely dark. You want to be able to see all the tonal values and all the difference between contrast and stuff like that. So I feel that that's good enough for me right there. And one thing I did forget to say about the synthetic skin is you want to let that dry for at least 24 hours. So now we're going to step back over to the printer here. And we're going to print this image. And this is just one way to do it. Okay. Alright. So I'm going to bring this right up over here. So you guys can see. Let me adjust my camera. Alright. A little bit more of an adjustment. All right. So I'm going to hit file. I'm going to hit print. I'm going to select the printer. Okay. And now I'm going to hit print. Okay. And that's the size that I want it. I'm going to make sure that the layout is flipped horizontally. And I'm going to make sure that everything here as far as presets are the settings are default of course I'm using one piece of inkjet stencils paper for this print as always you don't want to put a punch of paper into the printer use one piece at a time I'm gonna hit print and there we go let's click OK for the colorimetric and now it's gonna print alright so I'll show you guys how this one comes out and then we'll get into another way of using Photoshop to print these stencils. All right. So this is the way that I would literally transfer this over to skin. I'd, uh, I'd end up cutting this out and transferring this over exactly like that and tattooing it. But if you guys are not comfortable with that, let us step back over to the computer all right and I can show you guys how to create a more simplified stencil within Photoshop so what you want to do is you want to bring up the image that you want to do for example this image I've already adjusted the uh, dodge here um, maybe I want to burn it back in a little bit, get some of the areas a little bit darker for what I'm about to show you guys. Eh, maybe a little bit darker right by the ear right there in the hat. All right, that seems good enough for me. I like the way that the jacket is looking and the vest is looking and the hands. They're good enough to use this. So you want to go into your filters, okay? And you want to go into filter gallery and you want to select and you can select photocopy and then jump at the detail and change the darkness but it does end up looking kind of weird so we'll play with that some and that's because this image is really dark It has a very dark background. And there are other options within 
we can uh, look at some stylizing or some textures but none of those really work too well photocopy is really one of the ones that is the best maybe note paper um, you can kind of change the way the grain is or the image balance but and that doesn't maybe even graphic pen there nah. okay so the best is photocopy in this situation it kind of does what the tattoo stencil app does but you kind of got to play with it and kind of get it to where you want it to be so we will click OK on this. Let me let me see if I can get a little little bit more detail into this. Kind of where I feel it would be good. Kind of like that. So we can click OK and we'll have this here. So what I really want to do now is step back and go back into my dodge tool. And literally scale the size down and start dodging all of this background because I feel like the background is too dark for the print and I want to brighten it all up so you kind of want to tap around to get the image background as light as possible you could also even lighten up a lot of the image itself Okay, and once I feel like it's good, get some of this area. All right, I feel that that's okay. Let's put another piece of uh, stencil paper into the printer. And once again, we will come back over here. And we'll print this image. Remember, only use one paper. All right? So we're going to hit File. We're going to hit Print again. And we're going to print the image, making sure to remember to flip the layout horizontally within the print settings okay then we're hitting print okay all right and now it's going to print and now we have this and this pretty much works perfect for me it will transfer onto the skin exactly the way that I want it. So I'm going to show you guys now literally how to transfer a stencil onto skin. Okay. All right. So let me get into something that I would like to print. All right, guys. So I'm going to show you something pretty simple. It's kind of like my logo one of my logos and we're going to print it fairly small and I'm literally going to put the stencil onto myself and show you how I like to put the stencils on to my skin okay so you guys you guys have been watching how the how the printer prints so I'm just going to go ahead and print this Okay, now I'm going to make it pretty small, stick it up into that corner right there, alright, always remembering to use the flip horizontal here for the layout, okay, so now we're going to print it. Right. Now that printed pretty quick because it's a small image. All right, so I'm gonna cut it out.
But even an image this small, I'm going to show you guys how well something this small will transfer to skin. I waste a lot of paper. I guess it is what it is. Some people feel like, oh, can't waste paper, blah, 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 this and that. All right. So let's get into actually putting this image onto skin. Okay. You guys see all my old tattoos on my leg. All this stuff is from like 25 years ago when I didn't know what I was doing at all and I was practicing. I got the Star Solomon here. Um, some other stuff, this crazy skull. But we want to get our gloves on before we continue placing on a stencil onto anyone's skin. You want to prep the skin. So we want to we want to grab a razor. And me, I pretty much grab a paper towel and literally I will shave the area with 70% isopropyl alcohol. I'll put some onto the paper towel. So I'm going to put this stencil right about here in this area. And I'm going to get the area nice and wet. And I'm going to shave accordingly for size. Now, when I'm tattooing, I like to use a tattoo film from Inkjet Stencils that they sell on their website. It's a really great product. And I will show you guys that in a second after shaving. Okay. The product that I use after tattooing from Inkjet Stencils is called Tattoo Derm. It is the original tattoo film. Everyone else is a copy. Remember that, guys. Okay, so I literally will apply for this size stencil about that much of the stencil prep solution which is available through inkjet stencils it is their proprietary solution if you guys are not using this solution then you guys ain't doing it right okay you really want to rub this well into the skin until literally it turned white as you saw and then you can wipe it off And now this step is pretty critical. I'm going to use more stencil prep. Put that into my glove. A little bit like that. Just like two little squirts. And then I'm going to use this stuff right here. Stencil anchored. I feel that the stencil just sticks better and goes on. And this is my way of doing stuff. You don't necessarily have to do this. You can just use stencil prep. It works just as good. But I feel that the paper sticks to the skin better when I do it this way. So no matter what solution you're using, you want to use the stencil prep with it. You want to rub it into the skin really, really well until the skin gets tacky. Until you start feeling the tackiness. Okay, I feel that that's good enough. That's nice and tacky for me. So I'm going to apply this stencil right there and I'm going to hold the stencil 
just like that as you see for about 15 to 30 seconds depending on the size of the stencil itself you're going to need to hold it onto the skin for a decent amount of time for the inkjet stencil solution to transfer onto the skin now you need to remember that the stencil prep is a very important part to the stencil transferring because it tr it literally changes the pH of the skin so that the skin can accept the dye and that is something that is very very important now literally you can just let the stencils hang out on the skin for even one minute the longer you let it stay on the better the solution will transfer onto the skin alright I feel that that's good enough and you see how well it sticks I'm gonna even grab a little corner and pull it and tug and you see that I feel that with the stencil anchored it sticks very very well look at that I'm literally pulling on it and it's stuck to the skin anchored okay now look how amazing that transferred with the amount of detail let me zoom into that look at that guys you don't get that with anything else but inkjet stencils it's absolutely amazing okay now let's go back up all right now let's see if you guys can see me correctly let me see how far back i need to go okay so the product that i was talking about that i used that after my tattooing is this it's called tattoo derm and you can get it right from the tattoo derm website tattooderm.com it's also where you can get all of the products that inkjet stencil sells like stencil prep which uh, is a proprietary solution for the inkjet stencil system and yeah so I hope you guys enjoyed this review and I hope that I've been able to help you guys out there also with the stencils you want to let them dry for at least 25 minutes before you start tattooing that's very important and yeah if you guys like my review give me a thumbs up and please subscribe all right peace